Despite rumors to the contrary, there is no truth that we can discern at this moment that Hillary Clinton is about to welcome Caterpillar Heavy Machinery as a big ticket sponsor of her campaign. Though it would make sense because at the rate her popularity is diving, she needs all the bulldozers she can get to dig her out of a potential hole against Donald Trump. Or is all this just another polling smoke mirrors and numerical nonsense issue? Here's something that should not reside in the nonsense category. More people hate Donald Trump than like him. That's a fact. More people hate Hillary Clinton than they would like to admit. That's a fact. So what is a centrist and an independent supposed to do in November? Bernie? You would think that when a gun is used either in the commission of a crime or in the self-defense killing of someone, that weapon would never again see the light of day. It's not the case. Why would someone then accept George Zimmerman's gun that killed Trayvon Martin as an auction piece? We'll talk to the man who made the call. Your calls and more as we go through the evening, daring you to make sense and not spout cliches. <laughs> not here. I'm Ed Berliner. This is The Hardline for Tuesday, May 17th, 2016. I feel about Oregon and Kentucky the way I usually feel, and that is if there's a large voter turnout, I think we'll win. Uh, Kentucky and Oregon pose the usual problems for us in the sense that they are closed primaries. Independents uh, are not allowed to vote, something that I think doesn't make a lot of sense, but those are the rules. But I think in Oregon and in Kentucky, if we can bring out large numbers of people, I think we're going to win. Another evening begins where Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders will seek to prove once again that Democrats are in just as much of a quagmire as Republicans when it comes to their presidential choice. We finally have a hint of how Hillary will take on Donald in the general election phase. There's a fairly interesting claim that Donald Trump lied on his candidate disclosure form and the right will rail, but the left has launched a powerful new TV ad against the man who once said he might date his daughter if she were not his daughter. From the creepy to the callous to the cockamamie, let's dig in. Welcome back after a long absence because she was waiting until the Cubs were near first place. The CNBC contributor, author of The Entrepreneur Equation, Carol Roth, joined by veteran conservative and senior policy analyst at the Independent Women's Forum, Hadley Heath Manning. Ladies, I'm in good, good company tonight. And we got a lot to talk about. All right, Carol, first time back in a long time. Let's get to it. New NBC News poll shows Hillary Clinton losing ground to Donald Trump, only leading by three points nationwide. Last week, the same poll had it with a five point advantage. All right. But still, there's a 75 point margin among black voters, 84 percent to 9 percent. And Clinton holds a big advantage among Hispanic voters. So really, are these polls telling us anything that really will be substantive to the general election at this early stage? Uh, in a sense, they are in terms of the, the momentum shift and where they're moving. And you know, Ed, I was on this program back very late last year, you know, call it uh, August, September, telling you that this was going to happen and that your next president was going to be Donald Trump. And I think that as the race solidifies and Hillary becomes the nominee, that Trump picks his VP, currently sounds like that may be Newt Gingrich, who knows. I think as these things start to solidify and it becomes head to head, the, that uh, lead for Hillary is going to dissipate. Donald is going to keep climbing and he will be the next president of the United States. All right, I'm going to go ahead and mark that down. You always call me and tell me these things. I get it. So we'll go ahead and make mark of it. Hadley, let me come to you then, because this comes down again to the women's vote. Ladies, we have you here tonight because quite frankly, Hadley, there are women who simply say they won't vote for Donald Trump. But at the end of the day, are we still looking at the fact that should Donald Trump win this election, it's going to be simply stated that people, even Democrats, cannot stand Hillary Clinton and they are tired of the Clinton machine rolling over people with their lies and their, quite frankly, a lot of their bull. This is certainly going to be an election where many voters feel like they're facing the lesser of two evils or they're choosing between two candidates, both of whom they find to be unfavorable options. But you're right about the women's vote in this latest polling. Clinton still ahead by 15 points with women. What we don't talk about as frequently, and I think is just as interesting a phenomenon, is that Republicans tend to do better with men. And in this case, Trump is polling 11 points ahead of Hillary when it comes to male voters. And he's polling ahead of her 14 points when it comes to white voters. So while these trends are not really surprising overall, and I agree with Carol's assessment of Trump's momentum, I believe that Democrats should not write off this election. They should, they 
would be making a grave mistake if they were underestimating Trump when it comes to the general election. So although he may lose with some categories of voters, people of color and women, he could stage a very competitive race due to the advantages he has with other voters. Ladies, I'm glad we have you both here tonight because there is something we need to talk about specifically when it comes down to women and Donald Trump. A super PAC named Priorities USA Action has a $6 million investment in an ad campaign. They have gone after Donald Trump with two television attack ads. They just started today. Let's look at the first one in its entirety. I want you both to comment on what's being said. Here we go. You know, you could see there was blood coming out of her eyes, uh, blood coming out of her wherever. Does she have a good body? No. Does she have a fat ass? Absolutely. You like oh girls God. that are five foot one, they come up to you know where. If Ivanka weren't my daughter, perhaps I'd be dating her. I view a person who's flat chested is very hard to be a ten. And you can tell them to go themselves. Does Donald Trump really speak for you? Priorities USA Action is responsible for the content of this advertising. This ad is getting an awful lot of play, quite frankly. And Carol, I'm going to go ahead and begin with you because here's what a number of people are saying today. I'd like you both to comment on this. There are many people I've gotten emails from who have said, and women as a matter of fact, quite frankly, who have said no self-respecting woman could possibly vote for Donald Trump after what he has said about women. Carol, your turn. So any self-respecting woman could vote for Hillary Clinton, who's married to Bill Clinton, who is, in my opinion, basically a rapist. I mean, come on. She is. She. If you're gonna, if you're gonna make that argument. I think Hillary and Bill have a lot more issues than Donald has. And the reality is, Ed, that a lot of people are not voting for Donald Trump as a person. They're voting for him as an ideology. They're mad at the system. They want to say, this is enough. We're sick of the political insiders. So it doesn't really matter what Donald Trump says, because it's not about him as an individual. It's about what he stands for vis-a-vis -vis the American people. Okay, I get all that, and I'm going to agree with you on that. But Carol and Hadley Heath, I'm coming to you on this one next. Carol, I have to ask, though, in a follow-up to what you just said, what about someone's character? Again, Hillary and Bill, you're going to go to the mat on character. I mean, listen, Ed, I will tell you that this, in a way, is a very difficult choice um, in some respects for Americans. There are a lot of people that are going to take issue with both candidates. But at the end of the day, anything that you can say about Donald Trump, you could say in spades about Hillary and Bill Clinton. And that's the issue she's going to continue to face. Whatever you say about Donald, and again, it's not necessarily about him. It's, a, it's about his ideology. She has proven it. She has been a public servant. He has been a public servant. And they did not do right by the American people over and over again. And that's the actual proof that people will be voting against. I think many people will be hard pressed to vote for Hillary. Hadley Heath, so correct me if I'm wrong on this one then. It does seem what Carol is saying and what many people are saying is, in essence, what we are doing this election season is voting for the least bad character. That's about right. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, not only do both candidates have very high unfavorables, but there's not likely going to be a big change when it comes to their favorability ratings, because these are two people, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, who have spent decades in the public eye. So everything that we heard in the ad, uh, those phrases taken straight from Donald Trump's mouth himself, whether it's about women or whether it's about Hispanics or whether it's about whatever group of people, we've heard it all before. There's not a lot that will shock or surprise us about things that Trump has said or done. And the same could be said of the Clintons, Hillary and Bill. And so we're going to see a lot of negativity, a lot of personal attack on both sides of the aisle when it comes to this election season. But I don't think it's going to change a lot of minds ultimately because we already know so much about these candidates. It would be different if they were candidates with very high unfavorability, but people that we didn't know very well. But we already know a lot about Donald Trump and Clinton. And we're going to hear a lot more about it between here and November. Here we come with what everybody else is talking about today, the New York Times piece on Sunday. We talked about this ad nauseum yesterday, quite frankly, and as a lifetime journalist, I find it to be appalling in the fact that they would take these kind of shots, and they were, it was very weak. If you're going to write a piece on somebody, write it about Clinton, write it about Sanders, write it about Donald Trump, but at least have some meat behind it. That's pretty much what everybody is saying. I tend to agree with that. But here's the next question. Hadley Heath, to you first. According to Vice President, Executive Vice President Michael Cohen, a Trump attorney, 
Now, there was an indication made that they were going to sue the New York Times earlier today. He backtracked on that, said, no, we want an apology. Uh, they need to do a retraction. It's not going to happen. The New York Times is standing by it. But let me ask you a flat out question. Donald Trump thinking about suing the New York Times. Do you think he should go after them? Oh, and as a matter of fact, let me tell the folks listening and watching, we're going to ask you the same question after the break. Go ahead, Hadley Heath. You know, there's something interesting someone told me when I first moved to Washington, D.C. They said, in D.C., perception is reality. And that is something that I hate about Washington. That's something that a lot of people hate about Washington. But ultimately, I think Donald Trump's decision to sue the New York Times or not to sue the New York Times in any way that he's going to go after the Times or try to expose this as a hit piece, expose this as some kind of political spin coming from the newspaper of record, benefits him because the perception from people will be that this is yet another attempt from the mainstream media uh, to, to basically attack the character or attack the past of a candidate that they don't agree with in it when it comes to political ideology. And so ultimately, his decision to sue doesn't come down to whether or not the suit is winnable or whether or not that's the right thing for him to do, but it comes down to what people will perceive about this conflict between him and the New York Times. I think that's a very good point to put in here, Carol, about the perception on all this, because there were some things inside that article, I think, that had a little more meat than what they led with at the top, to be quite frank. But here's the issue here. Suing the New York Times. Carol, you and I both know Donald Trump has threatened to sue just about everybody. I imagine that I may get a threat here in a couple of minutes here, just by the fact that we're talking about this right here. So shouldn't he just let this go? Or does this really just help him when he just goes, he basically does exactly what he has done from day number one. He gets right in people's faces and says, this is what I'm going to do. Doesn't hurt, doesn't help. I don't think he needs to sue them. I think that the piece actually helped him quite a bit. First of all, what it did is it set up that he did help women in their careers, which seems to me, as a woman, to be a good thing. The second thing that it did is it drew the comparisons between his supposed treatment of women and Bill Clinton's supposed treatment of women, and it also pointed out the hypocrisy in the mainstream media. So he, all he has to do is continue to threaten to sue. He doesn't have to spend a penny because that whole um, circus around it really ends up supporting him and making people distrustful of the media, making people bring up Bill Clinton and making Trump look better than would have been done had they not put anything out at all. Yeah, quite frankly, the New York Times piece actually helped Donald Trump in many ways. The ad that the PAC put out actually is getting a lot more traction and people are paying much more attention to that. The New York Times needs to be ashamed of itself on this one, though. But then again, I only just read them occasionally and sometimes I read them online, which means we don't pay. There you go. Hadley Heath Manning, <laughs> Carol Roth, always appreciate your time. Ladies, thanks so much for joining us. We'll talk to you both soon. Now, your dialing fingers should be in motion. 1-877-NEWSMAX. 1-877-639-7629. We're going to get your reaction to the anti-Trump ad we just saw and ask what, if anything, you as Republicans fear the most about Hillary, Bernie Sanders, because we've got a long way to go until we get to November. Dial them up. Here we go as the hard line continues.